coming out to this special uh, Sunday evening event. We're not usually open after hours, so it's really special to, uh, to be here. Um, longer than we normally are, it's kind of cool. It's like the after party at Malvern Books. Um, <laughs> it's also a really special month. It's April, which is National Poetry Month. Um, so you may have noticed some signs around the store. Uh, all the poetry here, including the $5 books, um, our author's books, it's all 20% off. Um, so, so please cruise. Uh, there's a lot of really great poetry here. Um, so we are super excited to introduce our two uh, readers tonight. And without further ado, I will welcome the first one. Uh, Roger Reeves is the author of the poetry collection King Me from Copper Canyon and recipient of honors and support from the National Endowment for the Arts, the Poetry Foundation, Red Loaf, the Provincetown Fine Arts Work Center, and Cave Khan. His poems have appeared in journals such as Poetry, Plowshares, American Poetry Review, Boston Review, and Tin House. Kim Adonizio, whose name I hope I didn't mess up, selected Kletic of Walt Whitman for the Best New Poets 2009 anthology. He earned his MFA from the Mitchell Center in 2010 and his PhD in English from UT's Department of English, and he previously taught at University of Illinois Chicago. Please welcome Ron. The Mayor of Money for Emmett Till. Another dead mare waits in the shoals of some body of water, waits to be burdened, born into a foaming ocean where it might become food for whales or simply empty signifier. Hair latched to the sea's undulation like Absalom's beauty, caught in the playful branches of a tree desiring union, entanglement, thick confusion, but not this mare. She does not get the luxury of a lyric, a song that makes our own undoing or killing sweet, even as we go down into the fire to rise is smoke. This horse lies, eyes open, among the stone and freshwater crawfish in money, Mississippi. She listens to the men's boots break the water when they drop a black boy's body near her head, only to pick him up, to let him fall, Again, there, bent and eye to eye with her, as though decaying is something that requires a witness. As though the mayor might say, oh, on Tuesday after the rain fell, the boy's neck finally snapped from the weight of the mill fan. He never looked at me again. Or the boy might say, no more. They part here. The boy's body carried back to town by another as the horse stays, says nothing, because horses don't speak. Besides, this one's dead. Maggot therapy. Not the debridement of the wound. The wedding dress decanted of the bones and snow-blown skin of a bride circling through the splinters of winter. The ash and orchard of a gray heaven surrounding the tumble of guests leaking out into the night to wish her slawing off of dress and wound. Well, no, not this debridement which is greeted with cake and symbol and the calling on of a mastering God, which is perhaps the dark erasing itself from day. The healthy skin of night pulled taut over the bone clots of stars. The chronic fever of noon driven off like the fox to the farthest blue hills. The fever kept hidden there, hot and vigilant in the fox's mouth, which is perhaps the debridement I have been looking for, something that will linger inside a suicide and eat around the bullet still thrumming against the salt and clatter of my brother's brain, which is now below the bob and tether of an ocean that opens itself like a wound. Maggot, how lightly you travel through the ribs of beggars and barns, kings and convents. How often they've misnamed your benevolence. 
Teach me again that I do not own this body that walks me over this snow and cracked pavement. The winter light pulling at my bare ankles. Teach me what to do with the dead I carry in my mouth. Teach me to travel light with their bodies in my belly. I want to thank Malvern uh, for having me. Uh, it's my first time reading here, so this is kind of exciting. Um, I remember when I used to live in Austin, there was like one bookstore. <laughs> now we got like three. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. We're coming up. We're coming up. Uh, and uh, it's really exciting to be here with Anne Maria, who, um, who, Missioner Center. It's like Mission of Love out here. So uh, it's nice to get love from everybody. Thank you, Marla, for putting us together. Thank you, Malvern, for having us. All the Oski Woskis, I see some of the folks I went to MFA with. Good to have those folks. All the new skis and the NWP folks. Right? It's good to be here. Let's not be fighting. <laughs> Back in the day, it used to be a fight. <laughs> it's not that anymore. Uh, I'm going to read some new poems. Some of them have titles, some of them don't. God said it is good. The corpses perfuming paradise. The vultures spinning a crown of thorns over every head. The vultures, excuse me, the flies lusting hosannas docked upon our lips. The bruise of war masquerading as the bruise of peace. The sentry lunged toward our bare heels like a serpent sick in strike. The hood pulled back, the fangs coursing with its medicine, its sleep. And hush now, hush now. God said it is good, this sleep after the seventh day after the work of unworlding the dark for the world? Are we holy only when we cease, after laying down our lovers, levers, heavens, and balms, and allow the worm its morsel of art? Bureaucracy, and what about our beauty? God said it is good, though it is difficult to trust any lord or master who would drive light from darkness. His spirit, once the wind brooding over the deep, now banished to anywhere the moving refuse to move. Heaven earth, hospice, home, the dead have too much in common with God, their immaculate and divine withdrawal. They're laying upon tables to move in the mind as the mind, as war moves upon the earth, as forgetfulness masquerading as peace. God said, it is good to forget. Everything forgets. It's how we come to know the future, which of course will burn. Enter now into the joy of the Lord. past Barabbas. The funeral passed, and also I loved him, and also I him, and so loved past him. And so all funeral the past ran animal up to our eyes, and so lo I love any which him. The I him, the scandal animal of him, hanging his newborn twenty years past newborn out of a moving car. The silence of the road sorrowing up. I didn't want to begin with music. The cough of shovels, the hiss of white chairs, tallying the fraudulence and broken hip of my uncle already five days past Barabbas. The shekels spent on Hennessy, the account drained, thieved, drained my father seven days in silence, God touching his weariness or not like a hunter that comes upon a broken instrument in the woods, the thing made feral by its brokenness. So cautiously he attends to the gut and tender of it, his hand raising the neck from the leaves, running one finger across its throat and listening for blood, or what blood remains howling, wolf. Um, this next poem starts out with uh, kind of an image, uh, it's collapsing of, of a 14 line poem, well, 12 lines from um, Jeffrey Hill's uh, A Pre Raphaelite Notebook. I uh, really love Jeffrey Hill. Uh, and uh, he has this really great image uh, that I've been obsessed with for many years. Uh, so it starts there and then it sort of moves out of uh, Hill's poem, A Pre Raphaelite Notebook. So this is called After Nature. The miry skull of a half-eaten ram, viscous rapture. The wounds opening to the earth, below a mole that once shouldered its blind 
ambition, babies, fame, but now ferries his late luggage on a spine churned to milk and pulp by pesticides. Gethsemane sat, bagged, and measured out in Instagrams for shekels of bitten through coin. Ants auditing abundance in the outhouse of death. Persephone promoted to pantomiming her loss in 140 characters or less. Will you be my friend on Facebook? Owl, black sheep weeping for wampum, woo-woo, and white folks' money in a flooded pasture. Goats, all the angels, dead, so Satan, the only seer of heaven, and he not talking. Sovereign, so sovereign the saws in the forest. They call themselves pope and pious in the felling and working of trees from flesh to soul. Property, property, all is property. What has ever been the wisdom in hierarchies? How are we to practice cruelty if not with virtue? Sing muse of the disappearing world. So this next poem, has a, it's, it's quite elusive um, and sort of a hip hop sensibility. Um, the only thing that I'll give the only, just because this is a quote, uh, Jack Johnson once was asked by a reporter, Jack Johnson, the famous boxer, uh, not the band, uh, was once asked, uh, why do white women love black men so much? And he gave the best answer, I think, to any stupid ass question, which is because we eat cold eels and think distant thoughts. So that appears, so that appears in the poem. I think that'll be all. What shall be done with the demand for more selfies? Selfies of the crow in the wheat in the wheat knocking against the window. Selfies of my daughter hooting like an owl and beating the back of her cage, the back of her bones. Selfies of Wittgenstein's eyes settling on the back of a crow, which is the shadow of a boy delivering milk to the door of his mother, where language began, begins, Gertrude Stein over the Stambergasi eating salt fish and conch fritters with Ame Césaire, more selfies of Negroes from Niger and New Orleans, blue black in the blue black buck and canter of summer, and Eve St. Laurent glasses and pinafores of light pinned to the eyes. No church in the wild, but more selfies of Susie Asada buck dancing on balustrades near the nigger cemeteries, where the chariot swung so low, we just called them commas. We about to fuck up some commas, yeah. Gerrymander and Jack Johnson the shit out of shit. Why do white women love black men? Because we eat cold eels and think distant thoughts. Jack Johnson, we need more selfies. Selfies of Frederick Douglass's pen removed from the gashes in his feet and writing hot checks for Rolexes and rivers our bodies just can't cash. Wade in the water, wade in the water, children. We about to fuck up some commas, yeah. Selfie and holler, yeah. Instagram at the ashram with Lil Weezy and Wardell Curry Jr., not senior, bussing three-pointers, yeah, on behalf of a local charity that sends mosquito nets to children in Africa. The Sudan, Niger, I don't know. Tiger, tiger, burning bright. Tiger, tiger, hanging from the street light. Distant thought, I'm so in time, I'm out of time. So selfie, I'm healthy. I mean, I'm saying though, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> um, so I'm gonna stay in the hip hop sensibility. Uh, I've been really thinking about this group named Migos. Uh, they have a song that kind of put them on the map. Well, Don Glover, i.e. Childish Gambino, titled the song, it was called uh, Bad and Bougie. Uh, but they use this phrase that I've been like obsessed with since I was a little kid, uh, which is my mom and them would always have these discussions about new money and old money. And I've always just thought, new money, you know, like my mom was like, oh, they new money, then it was old money. It was, you know, it was this thing. And I'm from Jersey, so it might not make sense in Texas. <laughs> everything's so new in Texas. You know? <laughs> everything's new money in Texas. Um, and so I was playing, I wanted to play with this idea of what would the new money look like? Like if, if if we could sort of, what would this new what would be the what would be on the new what would the new money sort of do? What what would it be? What is the idea of new money? So this is me playing with new money. Each day felt a little like the day after a revolution that had not happened. Evacuated, windswept, replaced. Though nothing had changed but the money, not its green or clean gasoline odor, because it was still the day after a revolution that had not happened. The trees glittering with glass from the evacuated windows of skyscrapers was nothing 
but a blizzard stumbling along the lake. The blindfolded, blindfolded by its animal lurch toward its end. The end hitting in its unbelief of an end, where all animal ends are hidden, evacuated, the absolute present, the faces on the money replace, the founders fleeced of their cargo, wigs, cheese, bread, and dough, the Culinary Arts Academy of America shuttered and shut down because of poison folded into the collard greens, grits and gravy, the pig's feet renegade and run away in the swamp singing with the chitterlings about how they threw some D's on that shit and rode dirty chariot down slavery, fat gold watch, sun eliminating the glades and gloss of paradise, where the panthers leaned so far back into their black, it was like the, the night had descended without warning. But I was just a hot nigger, almost wrote hog nigger, Twitter fingers turned to trigger fingers, at the beginning of this century reclining in prison, dreaming, I was dreaming of money, ice for my daughter's ear, Something she could hear above the bullets bulldozing through the neighborhoods, bulls, caps, and jackets. Rats slipping along the fences like yellow fog, ruggling along the peonies and dead parkas thrown into the river. But the faces on the money had changed, had been replaced with screens. It was not like the money in other countries, with dead poets or lovers looking off into the tractor chaff and vanity of the future where one doesn't compromise with the word eternal, but the eternal had been compromised. On the money, screams. On the screams, empty F-15 fighters lounging on runways, while unmanned drones flew starward overhead, their red, white, and blue chemtrails fluffy as George Washington's wig, haloing his dentures made of his slaves' teeth. And like a broken VH VHS tape, the drones fly back and forth over the money, screams flying out of the shot, while out of the shot, someone dies. Someone dies. Someone dies. No one can escape the time they were born into. Now let us live into the future in its, in its erasures. Or not. Ooh, ooh, this money got me saying a lot. Bobby Shmurda smuggling shivs and shivers through penitentiary windows anthropomorphizing the Anthropocene, Achille and Bembe blackening up the philosophical block. Come glean with me now about this new money. The pages that follow deal with black reason, the living crypt of capital, black skin, the spirit of merchandise and the sorcery of living several histories at once, bad, bougie, a black beetle riding in the black fur of a dire wolf galloping through the night toward a fire, everything lurching toward extinction, but I just got this new money and a critique of human joy. All the confusion of wearing a fur coat while picking cotton in Cowtown, Texas. What have I built other than a necropolis? What would the dead say of this delinquent Bethesda? Reprobate as rat shit in a tourniquet pressed against the falling world. How shall we proceed the moon at the bottom of the lake and all the world, all the world diving toward it? Thank you. Mm -hmm.